So Kate, you brought up this concept of ice related to preparing for space and being in space. So what, what does that actually mean? What is ice? So you can imagine it's very hard to examine these questions on Earth about things that are going on in a small capsule in space. And so people have tried to think, well, what are analog environments? What are like environments where we could study some of these things? Yep. In particular, things to do with human to human interaction, people's coping. Uh, and so sometimes people have built environments and these are these um, uh, simulated environments. Uh, such as uh, there's a site in Utah where they've built a capsule that looks and or is people imagine what it would look like yeah. if humans were on Mars. But they've also tried to look at, take opportunities uh, of where people are and see if we could study them. One of those is the winter over experience in Antarctica. There's okay. a number of countries have got facilities there. Yeah. There's a crew that usually stays in over winter. Yep. It's a reduced crew, uh, but that's an opportunity to study how people are interacting, how are they going in isolated, confined and extreme environments. And so that's kind of the recipe here. Places where you can get some of that's isolated and confined, but also extreme, because those are the three ingredients, I guess, for space yeah. pressure, so, so to speak. Yeah, they're analog environments. And the other one is submarines. Okay. So All that right. is also confined. You can imagine, you know, yeah. it's, it is isolated. You know, it's you know, extreme in terms of what people yeah, yeah. Uh, are facing when they're living together in, the, in those areas. Uh, and purpose-built research facilities have been established. There's one in Russia, one in NASA, for example, and they will put people in for extended periods of time and so like, so study. It, so how long are we talking about? Uh, so, a week? Uh, so a, no, a the, these uh, simulated sites have gone up to three years. Uh, so, so they lock people in these things for three years? They have, uh, and they've studied them. And so you can imagine, you know, that is a really big commitment, commitment to research, isn't it? So, uh, and at times these things have gone well, at times they've gone badly. Uh, and, you know, from that we've all learned about how people operate in these extreme environments. And, so, and I guess they're one of the critical parts is these length of missions, right? Because that's also in space. I think a lot of people imagine space, you're up there, you know, in a couple of days you're, you're back. But as, as we explore in other parts of the course, you're six months in the space station, but Mars is much longer. So there's these long-term effects measurements are critical, I assume, yeah? Yeah, it's a whole new level of trying to understand these dynamics, both the impact it has psychologically, the impact it has on the brain and cognitive functioning, these long space duration flights, but also, you know, what it means for people and their interaction. You're, you're starting to get to, you know, planetary three year plus missions, that is uh, a high stakes environment and it's meaning that we have to understand these things much, much better. Excellent. So, so you're talking about, Kate, that in some of these simulated, isolated, constrained environments, uh, there is a couple of cases that have gone wrong. So when has it gone wrong, either on Earth or has it gone wrong in space? Well, both. So in these, um, in these analog environments, there's one example of a 500 plus day confinement. Uh, there they had an intercultural kind of crew. So, okay. th so the idea is that whoever is going into space for long periods of time is probably going to be made up of people with different skills, yep. but also perhaps from different cultural and ethnic backgrounds. Yep. Uh, and in this case, there was some sort of offence taken between interaction between a male and female in mm -hmm. the Mars 500 study uh, and it wasn't resolved and it ended up with the latch between these two groups being locked you know for a number for an extended period of time so you effectively had complete breakdown uh, between these two groups uh, for safety reasons they closed off any kind of contact and of course uh, you have to try and resolve those challenges yeah. and you can imagine what does that look like on Mars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you, yeah. You, you can imagine, you know, again, everything just seems harder on Mars. So yeah, if you have this disagreement, you, what do you do? Like, I mean, I think this is the issue. What do you do there? I mean, how do you solve that? So it, it, it was intractable. So uh, obviously, what we would argue is if we could know about the groups in advance, how were people tracking uh, both in terms of the team cohesion dimensions, but also how they were going themselves. And in the Mars 500 study, they were measuring a whole range of psychological characteristics across time. 
And it is possible to see in these graphs that some individuals are, are sort of managing things better than yeah. others. So that would be early warning signs on how individuals are going. But also we need early warning signs on how the group yeah. is going, how yeah. the subgroups are going. Uh, and really, we don't have a very good way at the moment, although there's work sort of being done, to be able to assess how the group's going unobtrusively. So without the participants or the astronauts having to sit there and fill in surveys, how would we know yeah, how they're going? Yeah. And so there's some innovation happening around different kind of meters that people can wear that might detect mood, okay. the way they're talking to one another, you know, what's the valence? Is it positive or negative? Okay. Uh, are they using certain pronouns like we or I that okay. might denote right. whether a group is forming or not? So trying to look at like physical and then sociological and behavioral clues, I guess, to, yeah. to put up a profile. And if we knew things early, then it's possible to intervene if you're mission control mm. to actually encourage certain things to happen to prevent those things happening. So I think that these countermeasures, I guess, are where a lot of the direction and energy is focused. So that's an example in these analog environments. Yeah. Uh, another one, of course, is in space in 1973, when I think everyone's mindsets towards astronauts changed. Uh, the astronauts felt that they were being overworked by mission control uh, and taken a bit for granted and their needs and concerns weren't being listened to. And so they turned off communication with mission control uh, for 24 hours and you can imagine and this was in space so like this is a, a real in mission space. that so happened this is a skylab sort of mission and you can you can imagine what that is like yeah uh, and the the risk that that puts to the whole mission but also to the crew it obviously shows that the relationship with mission control had completely broken down uh, and how do you come back from that place such that you can have a trusted uh, relationship for both subgroups, the astronauts and mission control, such that you're going to be able to get mission success. So from that point on, I think the human dimension to space flight uh, took on a whole new priority within people's thinking mm. about how, how it was going to work. Uh, the astronaut wasn't just a piece of equipment or an extension of equipment. They too needed to be very seriously managed yeah and considered in in the idea of mission success. So so, the, so, the, so then these issues are clearly obviously not just abstract of people saying, oh, you know, what happens, happens. There are issues that are happening, and I guess this is now becoming, a, as you said, a bigger focus on NASA and other space agencies' goals, sending astronauts out, right? Once the idea of longer missions has become really possible yeah. and, and really a goal and aspiration of many countries, this question of communication, uh, coordination and psychosocial functioning is front and centre. Uh, and so there's more research going on at all of these sites. Uh, there's more technological innovation around how we measure group dynamics or how the team is going. And there's lots of questions that still need to be answered in this area. Wow, that's, yeah, mind-blowing mutiny in space. <laughs>